Bless you, bless you, bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My name is Apostle Peter Daniel. By the grace of God, you are watching me in live program, Heaven and Hell. The one we used to do every Monday to Friday, Monday to Friday, Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Uh, Nigeria time. Uh, by the special grace of God, we are going to speak deeply about uh, what uh, is uh, what the Lord is saying uh, about some things in the family. So the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Please let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Internal rock of aging, we bless your name. We give you the glory, honor, power, and majesty. We want to thank you because you have never failed us for once. You have never disappointed us. You have been faithful forevermore. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, our Redeemer, we pray this uh, morning. We ask you, Jesus Christ, to fill our heart with your presence, to fill our heart with your understanding, to open our eyes to see you, oh God, to open our eyes to see the things of the Spirit. Thank you, Father, because you have answered our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, there are some things we want to talk about this morning by the grace of God. We want to speak on the matter of uh, marriage. There are some error that is going on in marriage that God is angry about. If you have not married, this is for you. Whether you are married or you are not married, it is for you. It is two things because it has it is an error. That is why you keep on seeing home a uh, brick broken home everywhere. You keep on seeing problems, and Satan is be able to penetrate into the marriage of the Christian, the saint, because of this error that is going on right all over the world. I pray the Lord God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. One of the things that God I want to talk about right now is the issue of women in the house. God is angrily uh, is angry with the women of nowadays because of the way they treat their husband, the way they related to their husband. Many husbands who has not planned to be a boxer has become a boxer. Many man who has not planned to be a bad person has become a bad person because of the way the wife treats their husband. Because of the way the wife takes their husband, they have pushed them to the level whereby they have no choice than to make their wife a punching bag. So God himself is not happy with that. Don't forget that God is the, uh, uh, is the, is the one that formed marriage. Is the one that constitutes marriage. So he's always interested in marriage. Whether you wanted to marry or you are already in marriage, he's always interested in marriage. He want to know. He want to know. He want to know what is going there. So he's always interested. Especially in the believer's marriage. Believer, believer marriage. He is always interested in hearing it to be there. So if you have your home like this, and you have your home, you have your wife, you have your children, and you now believe that you are the controller of everybody, nobody can say anything, I'm telling you are a liar. Because after you remember, there's he who constitutes that marriage, he is going to judge you. So I'm going to talk on the side of women, and I'm going to talk on the side of husband, and I'm going to talk on the side of sexual intercourse. Another mistake, mistake that is going on in the home. One of the things that God talked about marriage here is that he said women should be submitting. 
This is the point of the old fact. He said, my husband is a wicked man. My husband is a this and this. He's not listening to me. He's not this and that. The truth of the fact is this. If you are able to respect your husband, if you are able to submit to your husband, your own will be settled. But if you are not submissive, your own can never be settled. Hallelujah. Let us look at Ephesians chapter 5 and see what God is saying about marriage. Ephesians chapter 5, verses uh, 22. Listen. He said, Wife, submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord, for the, the, the husband is the head of the wife even as the Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. Now, God compare man to women as uh, Jesus Christ to the church. You know one thing now. You already know that nobody can disobey Jesus Christ our Lord. If he asks you to go to Lagos today or if he asks you to go to U.S. today, and you are in Nigeria, for example, and you are telling him that you cannot go, you know in the process you can get punished. In the process, if you die, you are going to hell for disobedience, for the act of disobedience. The gravity of God taking a man disobeying God is the same gravity he took for a wife who is disobeying his husband, her husband. If God can charge a, a, a anybody with the charge of sin that you disobey my commandment for that you are going to hell. The same way God can send anybody to hell on the charge of you disobeying your husband. And do you not know the problem of the whole matter? If you and your husband is talking about something and your husband said, I want you to do this thing and you insist that you are not going to do it. Or let's say that you insist that what your husband says you should do is not the right way. But your husband insists, he said, do it this way. But you are insisting that it's not the right way. Now, and then finally, your husband keep quiet. He didn't talk anymore. This thing is commonly happening in Christian home because the husband does not want problem. If it's the husband that is more stronger in the Lord or the wife that is more stronger in the Lord, but it's usually open. I'm talking about man, woman now, to man now. So if the man, the husband, not keep quiet for you, and because he's keep quiet, you now believe that he has accepted what you said. You know it's normal. When the man keep quiet, you think that he has accepted what you said. So you now go ahead with your own personal plan. plan. Go, not doing your husband plan. If you die that day, you are going to hell. Because your husband did not agree with you. So to end the who is writing it, he will write it as a disobedient wife. Which can take you to hell. God doesn't, God doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't have, uh, how should I call it? He doesn't have options for disobedience. This is the point. The angel of the Lord spoke to Lot and his wife. He said, go, do not look back. That's the instructions. Go, run to that mountain. Do not look back. And while they were running, the wife of Lot looked back just to people because he was seeing the way the fire was coming. He was seeing it from the front. It was like, ah, and it's coming to our city. He said, let me just look at it small. I will not look it much, just small. And by looking at it small, it became a sort, a pillar of salt. Now, it's just a small disobedience. It doesn't matter whether it is a big disobedience or it's a, it's a just a little disobedience is enough to destroy your life as a woman, as a wife. A small one. The husband tell you, I want to eat pandan yam. You are saying that you wanted to eat rat and base. And the husband insists, he said, cook me pandan yam. You say that, uh, you know, Pandani Yami, for you to be pounding in the night, you know that the people have slept. Uh, so if I pound you to know that uh, uh, people, will, uh, people will hear it and uh, it can be disturbing them while they are sleeping. And the other keep quiet and stand looking at you. In that night, you went to go and cook rice and beans. If you die that night, God will not say to me, it's a small thing. No, the issue of heaven is not, there's nothing like it's a small thing. The issue of heaven, there's nothing like it's a small thing. 
let's overlook it. No. Every sin is a sin. Immediately, if you die, you are going to hell. If you die, you are going to hell. It is a just, sometimes you and your husband can be making a joke and on, on, on Sunday, you know, in just in a particular point, he can say, ah, he said, yeah, yeah, you want to wear this clothes. To me, I wish you wear this one. Me, I'm telling you, wear this one. And he said, no, 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 no. He said, that is what I want. Wear this color. And you say, say, I'm the one that want to wear it. It's my body. So because of that, me, I wish you wear blue. You are telling me to wear white. Me, I want to wear blue. And then I said, okay, no problem. In as much the husband did not agree with your the idea, is for you to go back and do what he wanted to do. You might say to ah, but this thing doesn't matter. Not to be ordinary clothes. Ah, ah, not be me. Won't wear them. Don't forget, you are under a man. You are no more your head. You have a head in your head. So once you disobey it, you might say it doesn't matter. You might say it's a small thing. You might say you too have to consider now. But the truth is that when you die, you are going to hell. He said, just as the, the uh, he said, just as Christ is the head of the church. Imagine the Holy Spirit is telling you, pass this way, you are passing another direction. How will you be feeling? Your conscience will not rest. You might nothing might happen there. There might be nothing that happened there, but God Papa Pastor wants you to pass there. Probably there is a particular reason to him that you did not know. And you did not pass there. If you pass another direction, number one, you get your punishment. Number two, your, your conscience will not leave you. You must say, but I, I'm the one I want to go. I feel like going shortcut. I feel like going long way. In as much you God, Christ is the end of the church. You as a Christian, you ought to obey. To obey. And to give your full attention to every instructions, he says. Number two, this is commonly done in the in the Christian home, which the Lord is telling me now that I should also tell you. It happened very well in sense of where the wife is very tired and the husband is asking for sexual intercourse. He said, that, well, let us have intercourse. He said, I'm very, very tired. We will have it tomorrow. The husband said, I insist. You see, there's a problem when a man is saying, I insist. You have to obey it. Then number two thing is that. Then I say, ah, hey, uh, sir, what if I'm sick? If your sickness is something that you can still walk around, it's something that is not that common. Because there's some sickness that you just, it's like a headache, like all those small, small sickness. God requires you to still give your husband sex. Don't forget, we are talking about marriage here. Marriage. Number one, I talk about full obedience. Women are to give their husband full obedience. It's not even proper for you. It can, if it's an act of, an act of arrogance, when your husband said, do this thing, and you are saying, sir, don't let us do it. It's an act of arrogance. The question is, if God can say Christ is the head of the church, if Christ is asking you to preach, is it proper for you to be saying, God, don't let me preach tomorrow? It's not proper. Everybody is with different grace. There are some people that God will be talking to and telling, do and go and do this thing, and they will not answer, and nothing will happen. And there are some things, there are some people that when God said, go and do this thing, as he say it, and you say, ah, sir, Let's say, I'm very tired, I cannot do it. Immediately when you say it, it will not talk again. The next thing is punishment. To grace our David. But the truth of the fact is that God expected us to be very humble to our husband. In what reason must you raise your voice against your husband as a Christian? In what reason must you stand against your husband as a Christian? In what reason must you challenge the authority of your husband? as a Christian. Do you know what it means to challenge the authority of your husband? Your husband did something. Probably, let me just use an example. Example. 
he beat one of the child. And the child came and reported to the mother. In fact, these are one of the heroes in the, in the house of God. A husband beat a child. The child come and report to the mother. And the mother started coming and was not working. Sir, what, what did this child do that you beat him like that? How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? These are literally things that take Christians to hell. This you didn't count as something important. How dare you to tell God that why, I mean, to tell your husband, why did you, why did you beat him like that? In fact, as the child is coming to report you, this place is supposed to give us slap. You are reporting your father to me that he beat you. There are some cases that the children reported to their mother. Not in case of their mother to fight for them, but probably maybe the child has something from the father and the father doesn't want to give. He can, he can tell the mother and say, ah, mommy, I asked this for my daddy. Daddy didn't want to give. And the wife will just wish the wisdom of wife. And go, ah, my dear, ah, how are you doing? Wisdom and wisdom and wisdom and wisdom. And dear, please now. And this boy need this thing. He's going to school, for example. He need this thing. He wanted to buy this. It's very important. Please, my dear, please, I'm begging you. Please help me to give it to him. It's not the act of you believing that he must. He must. So that I shall lend him the authority. Many Christian wives, let me say, many women have ended up in hell because of this. Especially when it comes to the matter of husband. You have to be extremely very careful. You have to be 100% obedience. To the extent that your husband will be happy with you. And may always do something that will make your husband happy. Immediately your husband is sad because of you. It touched God immediately. It touched God immediately. And which is very dangerous. Nevertheless, this is one of the also error that is in the house of uh, in the house of Christians. That the husband, unbeliever husband, tell you as a holiness Christian sister to start using the ring. And you are a holiness sister. You now say because God said we should obey our husband, you start using the ring and uh, wearing trousers. It is against God's will. In that point, if you die, you are going to hell. You see, it has become true now. If God is asking you to obey your husband and to submit, God didn't mean that if he asks you to go and do wrong things, you should go and do it. You have to identify, identify what is wrong and what is right. You know this thing is not biblical. God said we should not wear these things. God said we should not steal, but he insists that you should go and steal. If you disobey him, God will be happy with you. He will not be angry with you. But if you obey him, I said, on the point of my husband said, both of you are going to hell. For the people of of people for the, for the people now who is having issue with their husband because of uh, where holiness and not holiness. The husband is now very angry that you are wearing trousers. The husband is now very angry now that because, because your, your only life now has, it has become a high level now. He's now very angry with you now. This is the advice I'm going to tell you now. You are to obey God. While you are obeying God, you are putting his heart in God's hand that God should go and touch him. Because the truth is that if you didn't obey him, when he asks you to commit a sin, he will, he will take it as a big offense and begin to threaten you with that. But you cannot obey man because on the process of you saying, let me test it and just obey him for once. Tomorrow I will not obey again. In that process, if death comes, you are going to hell. Or if rapture comes, you are going to hell. So you have to be extremely careful in these two sides. Now, another thing I want to talk about is the issue of raising children. As a woman, God required you to raise your child in a very godly way. If you are not able to raise your child, God is going to require it from you. And that can lead you to hell. 
another thing I want to talk because I just want to sort it for now because I have a no and people will have questions. If you have questions you want to ask, you can come to ask me on Zoom. You can join our Zoom program, which we used to do. That is where we entertain questions. Now, if uh, now I'm, I want to come to the husband now. Husband, the Bible talk about husband to wife. Now listen very well. In verse 25, husband love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Husband love your wife, even as Christ loved the church. Do you know how much God, Christ, loved the church? He said, even as he was comparing the love of the husband with the love of of the church husband you have to love your wife now let me tell you the meaning of love when you love your wife you will overlook many offense that your wife do you will only correct her there are two things there are two things about 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 overlooking overlooking doesn't mean that he's doing the wrong thing and you didn't look the place no you know that what he's doing is wrong. Instead of you to get angry with her, you call her in love. Now, if eventually he did something that is extremely very angry, that can cause somebody to be very angry, instead of you to be extremely very angry, you can just talk to her and tell her that you are not happy with it. This thing, I'm not happy with it. You have really messed up things. You're not supposed to do something. In fact, what you did is very good. It's only bad. You can, you can just express your kind of unhappiness to him, not in anger, not to you shout to I said, yeah. no, 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 you are not supposed to do that. That is not love. When you come to a level whereby husband begin to shout on the wife, it's not love. So you husband, you ought to love your wife. Number two, you ought to understand. Love usually understand. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it talks about love there. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, so. So, it's not 1 or 2 Corinthians chapter 13. It's it love. It doesn't matter the kind of tattoo you carry. It doesn't matter the kind of anointing you carry. You ought to love your wife. Pray for your wife. Understand your wife. Understand the matters. And one of the reasons that, that cause couples always fight is because they don't understand each other. This is the truth of the whole matter. Women will always offend you. In fact, in a day, they can offend you 10 times in a day. But it's not everything you will talk about. We just overlook some things. We just overlook some things. You just overlook some things. You might talk in one place and just keep quiet. You have to overlook them. You have to understand that they are women. The Bible called them the weak vessel because they are women. The kind of mentality they have is just a helpmate mentality. There are two things that God is talking about. The man is calling and the, and the, and the woman who is going to help. Now, somebody who is helping you cannot have the kind of knowledge of the person that owes that thing. For example, I built my house. I built my whole house clear and clean. I know every corner of my whole house. Now, I now went to go and collect house. I'm just example, no, just for example. I now went to go and collect an, a housemaid to come and help me in the house. Do you know that not everything the housemaid will know about that house? He might know every corner of the house. He might know the rooms in the house. He might know every area where they push it. He might know where to sweep. But it will not, it was not there when I was building it. It was not there when I was praying on that ground. It was not there when I was moving foundations. There are things he doesn't know about the house. That is the same way women is to husband. God called them a helpmate. They are not the one that is sent as the husband. The husband is the head of the home. The kind of wisdom, the kind of anointing, the kind of grace in my carry, women doesn't carry it. They have the area they carry it. And the kind of women carry, man doesn't carry it. Now, the kind of ability the helpmate has 
to walk in the house, you that you are the owner of the house, you might not do it. You might be so busy to do it. You might be so tired to go around it. They will sweep, they will cook, they will wash, they will do this because that is the anointing they have. I am not trying to qualify wife as a ethnic, but as a as as a. I'm just trying to make an example that the kind of grace they have is totally divert. They are different kind of grace. So the grace the wife has, you doesn't have it. While the grace you have, the wife doesn't have it. So now the grace God is giving you as the head of the home is the kind of art of understanding. There are some times that we misbehave in words. There are some times that we be, misbehave in actions. There are some times that we misbehave in behaviors. You as a man, if you did not understand, God will see you as somebody who is not capable of handling your own, and that can lead you to hell. Because our God is a justice God who judge accordingly. He judge accordingly. He judge thoroughly between the man and the woman. Especially this, if this the, uh, the house is a home of a Christian, a Christian home, he will judge them accordingly. As a man. He will judge them accordingly. So you as a man, you ought to understand your wife. Then you ought to care for your wife. Crying is very important. There are little, little things you do to women that makes women love you deeper. There are little, little things that it doesn't have meaning at all that you will do to a woman that woman else will be rising. You can simply call her and tell her you love her without anything doing anything for her, for you. Just said, I just say, I want to tell you that I love you. That law, I love you, will be ringing on a breeze. It can take a week or two weeks before that in a race. Just telling her, not, he didn't do, you are just walking, everybody's walking, you just call her, say, come, come, yeah, I want to see you for something. He said, hey, yes, what do you want to see me? I said, I just want to tell you that I love you. That will be ringing. You can just be walking past and you hug her. You can just call her. You can just kiss her. You can just pick her. Just tell you, thank you, I just thank you. I appreciate God that you are my wife. All these kind of things is very important. It makes home to stand. Then don't, 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 don't be too big to play with your wife. Say that I'm anointed. The grace of God is too big, so you cannot play with your wife. I'm not talking about sexual intercourse. I'm talking about normal play in the house. You are this one now. It's not a matter of church now. You are not playing in the house in sense of maybe you are making jokes. No, no, no. This one is between you and your wife. God expected you to have a communication. Beautiful minutes, beautiful hours together. together. Smile always to your wife. Even though you are busy, see smile. Even, so, even though what he says is not that funny, smile, laugh. Just make sure that the laugh and the communication is going on. The beauty moment is there. It doesn't, when that kind of thing is going on, it doesn't allow Satan to penetrate. You bad, they said, The English is that if the war doesn't open mouth, it doesn't crack, it doesn't open mouth, a lizard cannot enter it. So if you didn't give sand for the devil, the devil cannot enter your marriage. You'll be surprised that it is possible to have a beautiful home. It is possible to have a peaceful family. Everybody is shouting, marriage is not easy. It's a lesson. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's, it's you. It's you and your wife. You are the one that is not making it easy for yourself. If the wife can understand the husband and the husband can understand the wife and everything is going on, if the old wife is able to give honor to the husband and the wife is able to give back the love, the home can never be cracked. The home can never be cracked. But because you have allowed the devil into your home, you have allowed the devil into your home, it, it makes the devil to work hard to attack you. it makes him to work hard to attack you. You have to make sure that all your space are clean and clear and closed. I went to one of my, my, uh, my, uh, 
my one of my father's uncle the fa my father's uncle that man has died he died at the age of 93 years old or so so the wife is still alive but one of the things i saw is this is that during the time he was alive during the time he was alive i witnessed them I, we used to go there to their house the man the old man and his wife they never quarreled before one number two if the, the man the man is a man of god the uncle is, is a man of god and where is an icon this man whenever he's solving people's problem his wife must stay with him his wife will stay beside him anything you want to tell him and you cannot say it in his wife's presence you carry your problem go you carry your problem go your wife will stay with him and one of the things i noticed that there is no day I repeat, there is no day this man will go out without, whether it's at home, whether it's inside the house, or going out, they will always wear the same clothes. Even to the time he was on his bed, about to die, they are wearing the same clothes. <laughs> and before he answer anything, we say, we say, mommy, what do you have to say to this? There's no matter you want to bring before him. We first say, mommy, what do you want to have to say before this? Because he wants to hear from her. The, the statements of his wife we will, will now tell whether it will make things easy for you. Maybe he will not be angry or he will be angry. If the wife is say something, maybe the wife, the judgment of the wife is that what you do is very wrong. So he's going to judge you. The award is always very correlating no disagreement and they judge quietly like clearly the attack i see the man whenever maybe where somebody do something that is wrong i've seen him correcting the person in anger telling me get out of my get out of my present the man of god the wife will say her daddy please forgive him no matter whether it is two of them the man abuse it will be the wife to still apologize so we said, oh, daddy, daddy, you know, we are, you know, he's your child. Though we know that he has abused both of you, me and you, but let's forgive him. And the wife, the husband will look at the wife like this. So it's all right. This kind of things, if you keep on doing it, in fact, the, the mentality of people is that after the man died, the wife will die like that because their love is so great. Then after the incident of the man, the man's death, I went to the wife, me and my sister. My sister and I, we went there to go and ask Alex some questions. I said, Ma, there's something we notice. I told her. I said, there's something I notice before Baba died. That both of you, your love is very chronic. Haven't you faced challenges before or what? Or you have faced challenges and uh, you have fight and fight and fight. You now come to a level where you begin to understand yourself. You will be surprised at the statement of the mother, the answer of the, the woman, the old woman. The old woman said, if I will tell you that I and Baba, my husband, we have never fought before. I said, Ma, I'm so sorry to say this. It's not possible. I told her then. I said, because what I was hearing then, because I was seeing, I was about to marry, I was not a man. I said, because what I was hearing is that you, I mean, that marriage is not easy. That marriage is not easy. Now, you are not telling me that both of you have never fought before. How is it possible? There's no way. Even this tongue and teeth, they, they fight. He told me that, he said, my son, I cannot lie to you. I mean, I, I, with the level I am now, I am Baba have never fought before. I said, okay, 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 as I agree. But Baba shouted at you before, like, shout at him, get out, this and it. He said, never. I said, ah, ah. I said, okay, okay, okay. Like, what age did he marry? He married, Baba married her at the age of around 18 years age. I said, you are still very young, so you'll be doing mistake. He said, even though I do mistake, we understand ourselves. I said, ah. I said, okay, I said, okay, what is the secret? I still remember. I said, what is the secret? He said, the secret is that if Baba asked me to sit down one place, even my father, my mother cannot tell me to stand up. You see it? You see the statement now? If Baba tell E.R., sit down here. Nobody in this world 
can tell her, stand up, that she will be listening to. And she said, she, this is the attitude she begin with to their whole age. And they have never, he said, now, if I have obeyed him, what will make her him to be hungry with me? He said, Baba has never told me to do something. And I tell him, no, never. I will always obey. This is the kind of life God wants us to live. As husband and wife, who wanted to make heaven? I am not talking about just ordinary husband. I'm talking about the two couples who are, you know, try to make it to heaven. So, as a husband, you ought to understand. Then there are some times you follow your wife to the kitchen, help her out. When you know you are free, just go there. They appreciate it. They used to appreciate it. It makes them to love you the more. It makes them to see you like, okay, true, true. You care for them. Take, go there to the kitchen. Help them with some things. Laugh together there. Even while walking in the kitchen, hold her there. Play with her. Laugh together. Cook it. If she make mistake, putting a lot of mangy or a lot of salt, you do abuse. You eat it with love. You say, you, you try, you try, you try. You know, you, know, you try, you try. You laugh together. You, are, you have wasted my money. My meat has gone. My this and this. You have forgot. No, 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 you don't need to do that. Your wife is like, the Bible says, it's you yourself. He said, the two have become one. So if the two have become one, what will make the problem to rise? Then one of the things that also is, that also is a serious issue because of time, I want to just is the issue of sex. There's a message God gave to me that is very clear. He spoke to my ear very clearly. And he also warned me, he said, I should, I should tell the people the whole world. The reason why, the reason you always find your wife disobeying you, let me tell you, it's your fault. It's both of you. Not all women are bad. There are some women that are good. But because you have entered into a spiritual course, spiritual course, it makes the woman to be bad. And start disrespecting you. Do you know that as a man, it is a cause for a man to be on the, on the bed, lying down, while the wife having intercourse with him on the top. God told me it's not the matter of, it's not, because me, I have been hearing it. They say, I say see, me, I said, God has never told me anything. It's one of the things that I will talk very well. Even my wife, we talk about it that people say, I, I said, I'll be hearing it. It's better we don't do such a thing. But God has not spoken to me. Don't let us do it. One people are saying it is a sin. But if God speaks to me, then I cannot say God speak to me. And not quite long, the Lord spoke to me. And the, it's what a clear river, it's a clear voice I had from God. He told me that whenever a man sleeps on the bed and the wife, the woman, is on the top of the man having sex. So it is not the woman having sex on, with the man now. It's not the man having sex with the woman. It's the woman having sex with the man now. He said after the sex, it makes the woman have a bad spirit. You will just see that automatically the woman will be ruling you. It will be ruling your life. It will be disrespecting you. They will want to stop it, but it will be hard for them. It will be hard for them. The, it's not that they really, they really want it. it. They will begin to feel it is right thing, but by the time they, they will want to stop it, but they will feel like, no, 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 no. I will I respect this man. By the time they begin to talk to you anyhow, we believe it is normal. normal thing. The Lord told me, said, this is the cause of many marriage. How are we going to do it? Who will I shout it to? That me saying it now. Please, I beg you to send this video everywhere. So that the people, the couples might have peace home. Peace of mind at home. 
Women are riding on you, having sex with you. You are giving him your crown. You are giving the woman your crown on the head. So that he, she will become the husband. Why do we become the wife? Then the boss will begin to enter her to begin to be misbehaving. Not only that, it's also an abomination before God. I don't believe it. When people were saying that uh, uh, when you have dogging style with your wife, it's a sin, it's a this and this, I didn't believe it. I said, I said, well, I said, but we should be careful. I said, it's what God told me that I know. But this, this, this is the truth of the old fact. The approved style you can use. Just make sure that one, you didn't do dogging style. I don't know about what one thing I know is that man must be the one working for the woke woman. Not by dogging style anyway. Woman must be why the man must be on top. The man must be the one working it. Not the woman being the one doing the work. That is how God has created it. I might not be able to go far than what I'm saying. But what I just want you to be aware and be sure of is that intercourse has a secret and a spiritual uh, uh, spiritual penalty. It's something that is very delicate. It's something you have to be very, very careful about. It's not that I say, woman, just have a, you have intercourse. No, 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 no. There's a way, we, there's a way the Bible wants us to do it. The Lord wants us, to, the Lord himself wants us to do it. I pray the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. One of the things I also want to warn women of is this. If you do want to suffer, and if you do want your house to be a coarse house, don't always cry when your husband offends you. Do you hear what I said? Because by the time God's anger before your family is going to affect you, affect your children, that is innocent. If your wife if your husband committed any offense to you, don't always cry and talk to God, reporting him to God. Don't do it all. Even sitting there and crying, you know, it's your placing cause on him. Except if he does not offend you, he's innocent. Then that can bounce back to you. But if he's not innocent, he, he's, he's sinned against you intentionally, and is aware, and you are doing it, you are not helping the whole matter. You are only placing cause on him. It is also good for husband and wife to bless themselves always. For no reason must you curse your husband. If you curse your husband, and your husband later sleep with you, you both of you share in the cause. If in the process you are pregnant, the side that is coming to be share in the course. These are the secrets of marriage you never know. I am not pro. If a woman will want to curse the husband, then make sure that he's not sleeping with you again. Because any time he lay is something on you, you partake in the course. Because the connection of the back, the blood has mixed together. You partake in the course. You partake. So one of the things you have to be very aware of is that you must not try it. In fact, no women that is placing course on their husband will make it to heaven. There's no way. Then women should learn to say sorry always. Say sorry to your husband. No matter whether you are the right person, there are sometimes women will always stand on their right, saying that I, I'm this one, I'm not the 40. He's the one that is 40. Whether you are the 41 or the husband is the 41, say sorry. When you say sorry, you cannot die. Say sorry. 
I pray the Lord God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. For now, this is a short thing I want to say about marriage. Especially, take note, sexual intercourse should be very, very careful in doing. And sexual intercourse, through sexual intercourse, the demons has entered the child that was produced. When they have wrong sexual intercourse, the child will produce too. We, 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 we also have the demons of the darkness, you know. So I pray the Lord God will help us in Jesus' name. God bless you. Share this program to everyone. Then subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel and press notification button so that whenever I send video, you too can be notified and you can watch it because there are more revelations of God coming to the church to see the church from the problem of hell. I pray God Almighty will bless you and will be with you forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye. Thank you.